Let's change. Don't let me drown. And there's a seat. Just so it's the second seat. Perfect. And I'll get you to pop your seat on. I'm just going to grab a few details off you, okay? What's up you guys, I just got in from the hospital, as you just saw. I got some mail, so I thought I'd throw that in. Lost to defend to a video that's quite sad and honestly I feel really knocked about by it. As you know, like my blood pressure was already low. Yeah, I've had blood pressure issues for a while. Um, my blood sugar dropped and I also took an overdose last night, so getting mail it makes me feel a bit better. But yeah, I got us some badges, some more badges. Your story isn't over yet. I have six of these, so they'll go in six of the monthly boxes. And to finish the day, I'm heading to the pharmacy. Oh, the amount of stress that it has caused is unbelievable. Also, I made a fort last night. Don't judge me. Let's talk about what actually happened last night. Because I didn't clear that up in the video. Okay. Basically, I got really anxious and I got really paranoid. I ended up taking a, uh, a pretty big overdose. I then did phone with the hell pretty much straight away after because I was like, why the fuck did I do that? And it's such a BPD thing to do, like, to act on horses. Anyway, it, not, not even considering the consequences. But that's what landed me in a &E. And then as an a and &E, I don't really have much memory of what happened because I was pretty much unconscious of the medication I did. I'm not going to go about what I took because I don't want you guys to do the same. But uh, that's what landed me in a and &E. And I want to highlight this to be, at least I phoned for help. That's a big, big step. So when I was in a and &E, I was put into an IV. As I was saying before my phone died, um, I'm going to get my prescriptions at the moment because yesterday I overdosed. Um, let me be very clear. Let me be very clear in this. This overdose, whatever you want to call it, it was not, and I was first, it was not a suicide. I have to put that out there. Welcome to my den. And if you think I'm kidding, I've literally built a fort in my bedroom. Uh, sorry about the angling on this video, and I'm sorry. I don't know how I haven't already done this video because it's got to be one of like my most requested videos ever. No idea why I haven't already done that, but I haven't. So here we are. Hey, we'll see you guys. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, my name's Lydia. And as I said earlier, today's video, we are talking about A&E and mental health. So what happens when you go through the A&E doors? A lot of what happens depends on the area. Personally, I know in London hospitals, they have a separate mental health area. Does Manchester A&E department? Then again, though, Preston A&E didn't, Telford A&E doesn't. A&E departments work differently. A lot of them have got like specialist mental health places, others don't. Ones who do, they tend to have you on one-to-one -one observation if you're in there for a suicide attempt or any mental health. Every hospital I've been to, I've always been like one-on-one -on -one with staff. Every hospital setting, I've always been one-on-one. -on -one. This is just a generalised A&E department, remember? I I'm on one-to-one -one supervision with staff. What that means is the staff are with me 24-7 to make sure I don't go and try and kill myself or anyone else. While I'm there, or if it's because I'm there with an eating disorder and not eating, then they make sure I eat. That is so important. 
I think people are kind of afraid of A&E because not, they're not known for being the most helpful. Like, A&E departments just aren't helpful for people with mental health issues and that's because they're so chaotic, there's so much going on. I've personally sat in A&E for over 48 hours waiting for a mental health bed with staff members in A&E and A&E is not set up for mental health patients, they don't know how to handle it. So when I was getting annoyed because they wouldn't take me to a courtyard to get some fresh air because I don't respond well. I don't respond well to being locked in a room. So I just wandered around like the back part, just like up and down the corridor. So I was out the way but keeping myself busy and they got pissed off with me with that because they like you in a room where they have the control and I like wandering and being busy. You know, that's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone likes having something to do. The main issues I've run into with A&E is they have, they have such limited resources. And this was a big thing in Preston when I lived up there. Um, they, their funding was so short when it came to mental And the people who worked there didn't want to be there. Like they was, they treated patients horribly. I remember I was sat in resource after my most lethal overdose. A health guy came and sat on the bed with me. He was like, well, you're just gonna do it again, so I don't know what to say. I wouldn't, like, back then it was like, I wouldn't keep trying to kill myself if, you know, I knew how to cope. Now I've grown as a person and, like, suicide just is so far from my mind right now. You need mental health, you never know what to expect. Hospitals vary hospital to hospital. I've vlogged my experience in some many any departments, as you've probably seen on this channel. If you haven't, I've got an entire series called Hospital Vlogs, and that literally shows, like, my whole of the last admissions I had this year and it just showed what it was like being in hospital for mental health. He is not set up for mental health so go in there for it. My honest advice though, if you are in crisis, if you feel someone is in crisis, if you believe someone is psychotic, if you believe someone is at risk to their health, take them to A&E and endure the eight hour wait because it's worth it. It saves a life and I'm never going to tell you not to see. Always seek help, especially if you're suicidal and it's, if you're right at the end, leave me as someone who has survived a suicide attempt and knows people who have successfully committed suicide. And um, that's all I've got for this video. If you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Or if you have anything you'd like to add, let me know in the comments down below. Interested in reading all? Bye guys. One thing I do want to add is if someone recommends to get to A&E, don't take it as a shit way of then getting out of it. It is a very legit way of getting support and that is how I've got support this year. All my admissions happened through crisis, through the home treatment team, and you have to learn to be honest with them. Like, just bluntly honest and just say everything you think. Like, yes, they might, but isn't recovery worth it? Getting it all out there and starting the recovery process properly can be such a big help. I know for me, going in hospital this year has literally been a lifesaver for me. Like, I, I wouldn't be here without it. I hated it at the time. It needed to happen there and then.